Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Mindful Monday. If it's your first time visiting with us, you're always welcome to put in comments, um, you know, where you're coming from, if you have any questions, you're also welcome to DM me. If you're watching the replay, I will still see those. Um, email, DM, if it's your first time again, you can type mindful in comments or DM me if it's a different, uh, some of the, uh, you know, the downloads go to different uh, places. So you can either DM or put it in the comments if it's available, that word mindful, and that'll subscribe you to our weekly, and it's short, uh, it's a little newsletter, kind of a cheat sheet, it's called our Mindful Monday PDF cheat sheet, and you'll get a recap of what we cover here today. We also do uh, really appreciate anyone uh, who can subscribe to the YouTube channel. So a lot of folks reach out to me, whether it's um, in the yoga or yoga therapy circle or meditation or hypnotherapy, they're coming to me and they're saying, I'm so stressed, I can't, I can't focus, I can't calm myself down to, to meditate, I can't slow down enough, I can't sleep, this kind of stuff. So today I thought we'd talk about uh, how to use sound bowls to kind of relax and restore. So a lot of folks who cannot uh, do, and there are many different types of meditation, but a lot of times when people say, I can't meditate, they're thinking of, I have to sit quietly and clear everything from my mind, or I have to sit quietly and you know only concentrate on the breath. And there are even more stringent types of meditation, but there are many other types. So samples is a lovely way of getting folks into meditation because there's really nothing similar to yoga nidra or hypnotherapy, hypnosis, that you really have to do. You can just let your mind do whatever. So I love introducing samples. Sometimes I incorporate samples in my yin yoga classes. I use it in yoga therapy. I use it with hypnosis sometimes. I use it with yoga nidra. So it's a wonderful way of kind of getting folks to, to go on that kind of restorative journey. So some folks are like, what is a sound bowl anyway? So originally, um, sound bowls came about about 3,000 years ago, give or take. Um, some say um, China, some say India, basically the Himalayans, so um, the Himalaya Mountains, Tibet, Nepal, India, kind of that whole kind of area. And this is a place that was enriched, the mountains and the lands were enriched with uh, all kinds of precious metals. So monks and shamans back in this time, they were mining these metals and they found that if they melted them and then hand hammered them, and a lot of times they would do this under the full moon in a spiritual ceremony, they could create these metal bowls and use them as musical, spiritual, ceremonial instruments kind of things. So uh, when they were made that way, they were definitely called Tibetan bowls. And I'm gonna hold one up here. I was gonna take you all down to the studio on tour today because I have about 40 bowls, but we have it set up for group hypnosis so it wouldn't have been too pretty. So you can kind of see, a, this is a not a huge Tibetan bowl, but a little bit of a bigger one. And it's kind of hand hammered out. You can see kind of a little bit probably of how it's not all smooth inside. And so that was done by hand with a hammer. Um, some folks say it was done under only full moons. It could take up to 365 days. Uh, there's two different systems um, because of the different geography here. So there's the Vedic system, which is more, um, what I use more often because it's aligned with yoga, yoga therapy. So it's the Indian system as in India, the country. And then there is the Tibetan system and that would be more the Chinese. But either one, uh, they're both very acceptable. Um, and some have a lot, they have a lot of similarities. Some folks kind of say, we'll see which one resonates more of the sound vibrations with you. So each system though, they both have the same kind of connotations. They both uh, align each note of the, the octave, aligns with a different bowl, aligns with a different planetary system or, um, you know, a planet. And it also aligns with a different metal that was used in the original bowls. Today, bowls are mostly made of bronze and a couple different mixtures of the metals. So in the Vedic system, uh, we had, I'm gonna read this off so I don't mess it up because I, I can be a little you know, confusing after learning both of them. So in the Vedic system or the Indian yogic system, tin represented Jupiter, which rep represented the crown chakra and that was played by the B note. Uh, lead represented Saturn and that was the third chakra, um, or I'm sorry, the third eye, which is the sixth chakra and that was the A note. Mercury obviously was Mercury, the planet, and it was the throat or the fifth chakra, and that was the G note. Gold was the sun and the heart chakra, and that's gonna be the same in both. 
Uh, iron is Mars or the solar plexus. That's your power center, your third chakra, and that's E note. Copper is Venus or the sacral, second chakra, and that's the D note. And silver is moon or the root chakra, your grounding center, and that's the first chakra, and that's the C note. And that's the Vedic system. That's kind of the yogic system. Now the Tibetan or more uh, Chinese system, silver, the moon, is the crown again, and that's going to be seventh, but it's the B note here. Uh, Mercury is still Mercury, and it's the sixth chakra, but it's the third eye, and that is the E note in the system. Copper represents Venus, which is the throat or the fifth chakra, and now it's the A note. Gold is again the heart, and that's the fourth chakra. And here, though, it's the D note. Iron is Mars, that's your, your power center, your solar plexus, and that's going to be the third note, and here it's the G note. I'm sorry, the third chakra and the G note. Tin is Jupiter, and that's the sacral or second chakra, and that's represented here by the C note. And lead is Saturn, which is your root, your first chakra, and that's represented by that F note. And so, you know, it depends on, on where you studied and what resonates with you, which system you prefer to use, but both are, you know, totally acceptable and both work. So today, most bowls are, like I said, they're made of uh, a bronze and a couple of different metals kind of combined together. And bowls are, at least the, the Tibetan, the bronze bowls, are you know, traditionally played in what's called musical fifths instead of musical eights like most notes. And this was done because it was pleasing to the ear and also because it was uh, found to be very balancing to the heart chakra in general. So there's also now machine-made bowls. I'm going to hold up a smaller bowl, which is a machine-made bowl, which means it's smoother inside. And they don't play well when you hold them in hand, so I'm going to kind of hold it on a little thing. And uh, it has a, it's, it's a nice sound, you know, but um, the handmade ones are, are definitely very lovely as well. So what do bowls do? People ask, like, how does this all work? Are we just, you know, listening to this and it's supposed to, to change things? So, you know, there's this whole now research about binaural beats and even a cat's purr is healing. So we understand a lot more now, although I'd say they knew a lot back then as well. And so sound and vibration can retune or reattune our minds and our bodies. There's that whole mind-body connection at a very cellular level. It can shift our frequency from the lower or the basal kind of feelings, emotions, etc., such as fear, anger, resentment, etc., up into the higher realms. And so it can kind of release all of that negativity. It can kind of recenter. It can balance. It can integrate. And so they're used to number one to kind of balance and regulate any kind of dysfunction in the chakras if you believe in the chakras that's the more woohoo way of saying but each one of the chakras when we talk about seven chakras anyway is representative of a gland in the body and so there's the pineal pituitary, you know thyroid thymus etc etc adrenal it goes on and on they're also used, of course, in you know meditation, in relaxation. Um, sacred still uses ceremony kind of stuff, shamans. Uh, we have also a use now um, to relieve that mental hyperactivity or stress or tension. And it's also been used to regulate sleep cycles. Uh, it can be used to facilitate reconnection to oneself, to others, to the universe as a whole. And there's folks that are sound therapists or sound healers certified to actually use it for healing of other things. And so there are, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, um, there are really, really big bowls. I don't have one that big here, but I have actually worked with them and they are kind of amazing. They can actually make you a little bit, um, you know, kind of like, woo. Um, you can stand in the bowl and it can be struck. Other bowls, this is going to look really silly online, but you can kind of place the bowl over your head and it, uh, we vibrate them, we rub on them to vibrate them. We don't actually strike them so you're not gonging the, the person on the head. So that can be used for another therapeutic uh, realm as well. And then a person can also one-on-one -on -one lie down and have the bowls around them and actually on them. Sometimes there's warm water put in the bowls that are rubbed and, and played on the person and played around them. And so that's a therapeutic session. I don't really do the therapeutic sessions. I have, I have done a few. Uh, but I'm not a sound therapist per se. So when I do my group sessions though, or you know, I do the one-on-one, -on -one, I incorporate it into yoga therapy and other things. When we do our group sessions, we like you to lie down, if possible, of course, some people do this seated, with the crown of the head, 
facing the bowl, so you're kind of backwards. It, it feels weird at first, but that way the music goes in through your crown chakra and it kind of moves all the way down and through. So that's a lovely way of, of experiencing sound bowls. And um, I love that every time I've experienced them myself or folks come here for it, they say, oh, you know, I had a different experience. Sometimes they're, they're journeying, sometimes they're releasing, sometimes they're processing, sometimes they're creative. So it's kind of an amazing way. And uh, most people do say they have a wonderful night of sleep afterwards. Uh, crystal bowls are the newer one. We do also use crystal bowls here. We kind of combine them when we do our sound healings. So a crystal bowl, I'm going to hold it up, but you cannot play the crystal bowl while you're holding it. Oh, you can gong it, but no, not rub it. So the crystal bowls are ones that folks see more often um, online, I believe, nowadays. So same kind of thing. They're used, um, they're said to, to be energetic. They're said to be healing. They have all these abilities. So crystal bowls are made from crystal quartz. And uh, the crystal quartz is actually ground up down into uh, silica and then that silica is heated to about 2000 degrees celsius and then it's molded into the bowl and the bowl is like embedded with a, a double helix kind of, of a structure that's similar to our dna so it helps the sound to really travel and to reverberate around and it can last a, a few minutes at a time so i'll play one in a moment and again you know, we do have a recorded version of the sound bowls and there's some free ones on YouTube, but every time I play the sound bowls live, I'm playing kind of full out. And when I play them online, these, you know, um, media circuits, they kind of change and stuff. And also I have to play a little bit lighter. So I know where the ones that I recorded are, but I don't know how the live is going to come out, but bear with us here. All right. So these crystal bowls, uh, like I said, they have that double helix, um, and they're known for that energizing and healing abilities, but they're a lot newer. So obviously, you know, and, and they're very fragile too. So I have to be really careful here. All right. So I'm going to play a couple of them. I'm going to back this up just a little bit because some folks have really asked to kind of have a little bit more understanding. So this is going to be the hand hammered out uh, Tibetan bowl. And this is going to be F, which in the Vedic system is going to be the heart. So Tibetan bowls, when I play, I tend to do a lot more of this, but I'm going to play a metal kind of Tibetan bowl. I just want to move that. That wasn't it. <laughs> Where I'm going to rub the bowl, so it's this one. So it's a, uh, a hand, uh, not a handmade, a machine made kind of one. And so this is going to be C, which in the Vedic system is the root. So it's a grounding and it takes a little bit longer when you rub a metal bowl to hear the sound. So I'm hoping that comes across and if it doesn't, I'll also do the, the tapping so it has that nice grounding sound. And now I'm going to bring the same F note over in a crystal bowl. And the crystal bowls, again, you can tap them with the, the mallet. There's all different mallets too. Or you can rub them, which will do that long resonant sound. into what sound bowl for resting and restoring can be like. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, we usually do this um, in person, but we do have an online. So if there's folks that are really interested in that, I can put a link in the comments for that as well. All right, have a great Mindful Monday. And again, if you have any uh, topics you'd like to hear covered, please reach out to